Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. And now you have a director nominee. This guy is scary. Yeah. Um, uh, he's Oh, he's way he's... scary. Yeah, that's one of the big things we wanted to have a conversation about here. Um, if we can, I know there's people that want to, there's people that want to um, have that specific conversation about it. If we're gonna, if you know, I don't know if we're gonna do anything structured here. But so David Chipman, <laughs> let's let's go to the David Chipman subject. Um, you would know more about David Chipman than we do, Vince. You want to tell us why? Yeah, he's a total shill. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a bad agent. He was a mediocre manager. Um, he was risk averse. He never did anything in his career to attempt to impact violent crime, like from gangsters, uh, ne'er do wells, you know, convicted felons shooting up the city and whatever. Um, he kept a low profile, rose through the ranks. Um, and the minute he could retire, he went and ran to the Gifford Foundation or whatever it's called. And he historically, our directors, in theory, should have always been apolitical. Mm -hmm. I how I this is that's one of my biggest problems is what's going on here. How could you how could you elect someone to a position like this, like the ATF? That that is outright anti-gun. I mean, I then you're you, then you're uh, saying that you're going to use this, you're going to use the ATF to punish illegal gun owners. Yeah, they're turning us into the whipping boys, and he's going to get agents killed, and he's going to destroy the agency yeah. because he's nothing but a shill. That's not what we do. That's not what we've historically done. Yes, we've made mistakes. Yes, we've made bad policy. But generally, normally, usually speaking, we go after bad guys with guns and leave the law-abiding citizens alone. That's my belief. That was my experience. And that's how it's always been. This guy is a ringer for the Biden administration, and he will do and say whatever they tell him to say. That's why that's why they're putting it forward. It's like um, let's get let's get a bank man. robber. Let's get a bank robber to run the Fed. <laughs> He's never gonna um, get out of committee. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Walt. Well, what you know? Okay, they're going after guns. Well, why why isn't the director guy uh, alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosives? By the way, mm -hmm. well, well, tobacco. I think that kills more people than guns probably every year, and alcohol. So, uh -huh. so, oh, I forgot. Oh, they taxed hey, that. Hey, hey, they taxed hey, hey. that, they tax that <laughs> by the hundreds of you're millions of dollars. You're treading in Vince's personal oh, territory. Well, all, all, all I'm saying is, uh, what what kills? I mean, you know, come on, let's let's. Everything kills us, man. Everything kills us. What? Wait, 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 back up. You got to remember something. They get hundreds of millions of dollars from every puff and every drink. For sure, but everything kills us. So this, Protect, first of all, the right? whole idea of, of, of oh, we got to do something about this. Everything kills us. The air we breathe, the sunshine, the plants I, around I us, the food I, we I, eat. I personally don't, <laughs> I don't care if tax, as cigarettes are watched or alcohol is watched. That's all a waste of time, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it, that's, it's archaic. That's another archaic thing where, that we go at, that we have to police. Uh, yeah, we've got too many laws. We've got too many laws and too much too much stuff is oh, illegal. That would might make some illegal liquor. Oh dear. Well, um, and I think a lot of that know. is what's cre Look, the the problem that the big problem that we have before we get into Chipman, the big problem that we have in America that a lot of these politicians are ignoring is we have a mass first of all, human beings 
are can be violent in nature, right? Now, most people are not violent people unless you back them into a corner, but there are human beings out there. Some of them are horribly, badly broken, evil human beings that want to do destruction to everyone. Some of them are people who would do anything to make a dollar. When you make everything illegal, you are creating enterprises that these people can go into and make a lot of money. It's, guns is one of the ways, one of the things. You make, you, you start putting all these kinds of rules and regulations regulations on guns as vince was saying most of these gangsters most of these criminals are not going to a gun store that has an ffl to buy guns you're creating a criminal enterprise this is what happened with alcohol in the past this is what happened with uh what's happened in america with marijuana what's happened with uh, a lot of other drugs there's too many things that are illegal and so therefore it creates uh, a bunch of money that could be made around it and then people who go okay we're going to get into this business and to dominate the business you have to be violent now vince i know you know more about this than i do because this is what you spent your career going after but it, is that like a wrong assessment on my part i wouldn't say a wrong assessment um but we're a nation of laws and <laughs> we have a fair amount a mm -hmm. reasonable amount of gun laws on the books we don't need more the criminals aren't following the ones we already have. Mm -hmm. So that's why we shit hammer them, send them to prison. To put more out there. They're, they keep talking about this loophole. I've worked gun shows my whole career. And you know what? Like maybe one, one gangster will slide under the radar of 500 attendees and get a gun that he didn't have to have a background check on. But he ain't the guy doing a mass shooting or something. He's going and shooting up his homeboys or whatever they're doing. Um, right. They keep talking about this loophole. There are background checks. Gangsters go don't, don't but, apply. But, but, yeah, and at gun shows, they're background checks. The idea that there's no background checks at gun shows is not accurate. Like, as an FFL, I'm, I'm an FFL. At a, at a gun show, I'm allowed to do business out of my home and, and at gun shows here in Florida, right? So, the, you know, if I, if I go to a gun show, I got a background check, people. Okay? Again, 0.0001% of crime guns seized by ATF or traced come from gun shows yeah. they're straw purchasers they're trafficking in firearms if if i could get elected today and i was had a gun to my head and said make a law that could help impact violent crime firearms trafficking if you're dude if you're uh, a junior in college in atlanta and you have no, you no prohibition, and you go in and you buy nineteen freaking AKs, and the next weekend you go back home to Chicago or Washington D.C. and carry those guns back there. This ain't rocket science. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this though, before because I don't want to get off that particular track that we're on here. Do you think that there's just enough laws in America, not enough laws, or too many laws? I think we just need to enforce the laws we have. Okay. And maybe if we could tweak them, maybe go in and say, you know what? If you're a convicted felon of a violent crime, you there's no doubt you've done time, done hard time in the penitentiary, and you know you're not allowed to have a gun, five years is not enough. You know you got no business having guns. You did an armed robbery, you did a bank robbery, you did a rape, a kidnap, whatever. You don't get to have guns. Let's bang them with 10, 15, 20 years. But as far as the laws that exist, I think there's plenty of laws because the law-abiding citizens are following the laws. I think there's too many. That's so I'm I'm in the position of I think we have For too example, many. Give me an example. 
there's okay. I'll give you an example. There's like twenty thousand gun laws already on the books. Okay, no, I'm not talking about every state, every <laughs> federal jurisdiction. In in general, what gun laws do you disagree with? Uh, every single one, personal. That's this is oh, me no. personally. No. So you think felons, guys convicted of violent crimes, should be allowed to purchase firearms? Um, I don't think, pe- I, I, I don't think people, I think, I don't think, I don't, th- listen to me. I don't think people convicted of violent crimes, like the ones that you were just discussing should even be on the streets. Well, I agree, but they are. So the only thing we can do is make sure that. Why are they? Know. So, so let me just go down this logical path for a sec. Why, Why? are they on the streets? Why are these people who convicted heinous crimes against the uh, our other fellow citizens? They Why are they on the streets? Time. They did their time. No, they're on the street. No, they didn't do their their time. They're on the streets because yeah. there's they laws that say or they this, did their this, time or they got paroled. There's laws that say you got to let these people out. Right. There's too many damn laws. This is this is this is the way that I look at it. We should have here's look, I think we need simple laws. I don't know, like a uh, uh, 10 commandments is a good base for me, right? And inside of that, if you are going to if you're going to go against um the 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 rest of your fellow citizens, your people in society, you should pay a heavy price for that. Now, I'm not saying everyone should die for that. But people who commit these kind of heinous crimes should not see the streets in a year or six what months happened? or be let out because what of COVID. Happened? What happens when somebody does their time, legit? They get a, a severe sentence, they get seven years or whatever mm-hmm. for a attempted armed robbery, blah, blah, blah. And they've done their time or most of it and they get paroled. Should they be allowed to have guns again? Um, okay, so I think you're asking the same question. Let me get this in, Walter. Appalachian Gun Runner says, if they are released from prison, why not? If they are that dangerous, why are they being released? So, Walter, what do you want to say to this before before I answer that? No. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of agree with you know, what Vince is saying. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's this movement in this country now to bring out the rainbows and the unicorns and make give all the felons their rights again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 that's to like get those votes you know democrats can get those votes they want yeah um no so here's no. my thing if you were made a felon because of a piece of plastic or some other silly thing like that it hasn't happened no no i'm just trying to say this but let me say this if you're if you're made a felon over a stupid law this is the point i'm trying to make you you know you should be able to have your rights if you're a violent criminal Okay, well, why are you only in jail for five years? Why are you on the streets? That's not that's not you paying the, your price your your uh, to society. That's well, not much, you paying your price okay, to society. How much, it's the, how much should a guy, a twenty year old, goes in, tries to hold up a place, gets caught, done? He's twenty years old. He gives up. He surrenders. He goes faces trial. Gets seven years in prison. How much should he do? Should he do the rest of his life in prison? Because he's no, a scumbag. No. no, I mean, that's, I think... Go ahead, Walt. Go ahead. That That's exactly where people come on with all this drug stuff. Mm-hmm. I got caught with one joint. Now I'm in prison for life. You know, it's like... It, it's the same. That's the same. I don't thing, think right? a joint... I don't even think a joint should put you in prison. But I think that if you commit a, a violent robbery, crime... Robbery... I think if you commit a crime like that... Go ahead, Walt. Robbery is like... Or even armed robbery is not... Typically, nobody gets killed in an armed robbery. The gun is the gun is there just as a pry bar, so to speak. So, if the person does his time and he doesn't have any signals that he's going to continue, you know, you can usually tell when somebody's. But should they be able to buy a gun? No, 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 no. We, no. we agree. So, okay, so for, first of all, yeah, no. so let, let me but, just because then let you, me, have forfeited, you have forfeited your right in our society right. to vote, to own a firearm certain things because we have standards and everybody knew it. I knew it when I was a kid. I knew that like stealing like some apples from the neighbor's orchard or, or jacking them for a gallon of gasoline was not going to get me in prison. I would Mm -hmm. not suffer severe consequence. I knew if I put a gun in somebody's face that I was probably going to 
suffer something. I didn't, may not have known what, but I was going to suffer. Yeah. Here's what I think. Look, let's say we let that guy out after seven years. He right. should. Uh, here's what I think. He shouldn't be able. He should still keep paying a price until a certain time. But if after that time, you know, let's say he gets out and he he's he's uh, still paying the price to society for you know for for the rest of that time. After that time, if he proves that he is now rejoined the the rest of us and being a good citizen. He has the right to defend himself, to be able to defend himself, nah, unless he goes no, back he and does something to say no, that, that says, so he doesn't have the because right to defend he himself. Crossed, he crossed that threshold that we in society have said, oh, you don't get to do that. You don't get to rape babies or kidnap your ex-wife. But, okay, but that's a but that's a caveat. That's a that's a different thing from the setup that you said. I think if you do something like that, if you're a terrorist. Hell no. We should never, we should never, we shouldn't even, you shouldn't even exist anymore as far as I'm concerned. You should never get out of the prison as far as I'm concerned. But if you're a kid, you grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, you did the wrong thing, you you got desperate, you made some kind of, because it could be, a lot of good kids go, go wrong and make a mistake. You make that mistake. And then you pay your price for that, and you prove to us that you're you're a good person. Why are you not worthy of defending yourself? If you're a habitually violent person, you shouldn't you shouldn't even exist with the rest of us. Can I go off on a little tangent? Because mm -hmm. it's been a, a yeah. bane of my existence. Mm -hmm. Back in the '80s, when I came on with ATF, mm -hmm. we had what they called relief from disabilities. Mm -hmm. So those cases that had extenuating circumstances, um, they could apply, even though they were a convicted felon. It's like, okay, I burglarized my neighbor's house for a pack of cigarettes or something, but I got a felony conviction. They could apply to ATF, and we would do an investigation and weigh the totality, and we would actually grant them what they called relief from disability. Mm-hmm. They discontinued that. They defunded us from being able to conduct those investigations in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. So there is no mechanism, and this is where I'm agreeing with you. Give mm -hmm. me, be clear. I agree with you. There are those scenarios. A kid gets caught with an ounce of weed, but it's in a felony state, and he's 19, and he did his year and a half and came out and he's been working and going to college and blah, blah, blah. And there is no mechanism now for them to seek a relief, relief from disability. And that's where I blame ATF. Mm -hmm. We should have continued doing those, but they defunded. They took the money away that we were allotted to do those additional investigations. And most of them got denied. I mean, most of them were gangsters trying to get their gun rights back. But every now and then, you get that kid or that human being who screwed up 15 years ago and just wants to go hunting with his son now, and he can't get a gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I think we're, we're I think we're kind of like on the same track with that. I do think that there's really bad people that we shouldn't have in society with us. You know, and this is part of the a lot of the violence that we're seeing in America that these guys are rolling out to do this. A lot of this violence is based on gangs and none of this stuff is going to solve what's happening in Chicago, in New York City, in Miami, in L.A. And, and even oh, out in the country where there's ghost, gangs and stuff that like that. Ghost gun law might freaking slow down the Chicago violence and L.A. violence in New York. And I mean, do you, do you seriously? Do you, are you, are you being facetious not right now? <laughs> no, yeah, he's not. Yeah, not Vince, yeah. <laughs> go be careful, Vince. I mean, it, Everyone's gonna think you mean that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you gotta um, remember. You gotta remember something here, guys. The mm -hmm. same people that want to take your guns away are the same people that are letting the criminals out. Yeah, for sure. And the same and the same people that want to give the felons across the board, except for like murderers and rapists all their rights back at your yeah. expense by the way you're going to pay for their their legal expenses yeah you know? oh and so, they, they want they want armed security around them 
constantly. Oh, of course. But they want, of course. Yeah. But so they want the, everyone that's, else that's, unarmed. But also, if they're... To, it, go ahead, Walt. Go ahead. That's why you had to bring 20 or 30,000 National Guardsmen into the D.C. Yeah. for the inauguration. There's and machine guns. Bob, and barbed wire <laughs> fences, right? I yeah. Mean, you're, that, I, machine you know, guns to defend the Capitol, but not to defend my house. Um, so here's the thing. Let me get this. Let me get this because Armament and Axes gave us a couple of bucks here. So I'm going to hit the applause from him. He says, uh, what he wants to know what years was Vince active with the ATF? 1986 to 2014. Okay, there you go. Um, so good, good question there. Um, and then, and then LV Louis Cypher is bringing this up about FPS Russia, who, uh, Vince, you probably don't know him, but that's a, uh, he was a big gun guy at one time in the YouTube world. He was FPS Russia. He had one of the biggest like YouTube channels. He was a, a kid from Georgia and he would do a Russian, he was good at doing a Russian accent and he would do these crazy gun videos. Um, there was someone he knew who had access to machine guns and all kinds of cool stuff. And he was he got really, really, really big, right? I mean, I think he had about five or six million subscribers. And wow. um, I want to be on his show. <laughs> you can't. Well, he does have a podcast now, but he no. lost he lost his two A rights over an ounce big. of marijuana, and that's what LV Cipher is saying. He lost his rights. To, to to guns in Georgia because of an ounce of of uh, marijuana, and they went after him and took this guy's two uh, A rights away in, in Georgia. Well, well, for the rest for the entire country, to be honest with you. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.